Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of SGG Weekly. This is the F-Man coming at ya, and we're going to be doing part two of our Raiden DX episode. I'm joined here by my co-hosts. This is Aquas. What's good, everybody? And oh, what's good, everybody? <laughs> yeah. Welcome back, Aquas. I got push to talk on Discord, so I always forget. Ah, uh, cool, cool. Yeah, totally understand that push to talk. Got some other things going on. Want to mute the mic when you can. And then, last but not least, we have our expert host here, GG Maximo. What's up, everybody? How's it going? Anyways, well, glad to meet in the new year. Uh, we're trying to do a little bit more episodes here for SGG Weekly. Again, um, you know, we have our hiatus and, uh, uh, you know, we've got our real life uh, stuff that's going on, but we're glad to bring you yet another episode within uh, the, the two weeks here. And, uh, you know, again, SGG Weekly wants to bring you the finest of content here. And so, uh, if you have questions, uh, we are broadcasting live on Twitch, so feel free to chime in on the chat for some questions. But um, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and hand this off to the one, the only, GG Maximo. All right, so the main focus, last time we covered the novice and Expert courses, today we'll be focusing on the training course. Normally, um, when I just talk people ask about like what's the easiest course to get into for right in usually dx training comes up is because um for normal purposes um if you're just playing the game like regular like just kill stuff um pick up bombs use your resources it's generally considered to be the easiest um course to clear out of writing dx and i mean i found even when i was like a beginner it wasn't too difficult to do since normally in one zero it's just one continuous course where you have a bunch of enemies that spawn different points um you have this new tank boss at the end that you destroy it and then normally when you beat that the game will show you like you cleared the level give you the bonus based off the number of bombs and metals you have left and then give you a sort of course evaluation based on enemy destruction secrets found and fighting spirit slash guts bonus and then whatever amount of points you get from that is add to your score however if you actually are wondering like is training course more than just that well you would be right because there are in fact certain conditions that you can um, achieve to actually loop from the training course into what is known as i guess training plus which ends up putting you at the first at the novice core stages from 1 1 through 1 5 on second loop rank the way that you can do this is when you beat the training course 1 0 if you fulfill the conditions of at least having 99 percent enemy destruction 100 percent radar golden radar destruction no deaths and no bombs used you advance to the first stage of Phenomenon's on loop 2 difficulty, which is considered training 1-1. One, one. In addition to this, if you meet the above requirements with the 99% enemy destruction, 100% golden radar destruction, no deaths and no bombs used for training 1-1 one, one through 1-5, one, you loop again into training 1-6, which is equivalent to Expert Course's 6th level on loop 3 difficulty, and then you can just keep playing as normal from training 1718, which masters experts six for eight levels. And afterwards, the game will go into X training 2 1, which is basically the equivalent of expert on loop four difficulty. And then from there, it will follow the same looping rules as expert. And <laughs> funnily enough, the, there is a world record for this. and that's held by a Japanese player named Exchanger who achieved 29.9 million and made it to loop seven, stage eight. Seven, wow. How how long did you think it would be for like to get to that? Um, seven. Well, the training course in itself is like, what's about an hour if you can hit training two one. 
So then subsequent loops after there are like another 35, 40 minutes. So that would probably be at least close to four hours, if not more. Crazy. Wow. That's dedication for you. Yeah. Cool. So what run do you have for us? Or did you want to fill in something? So this is, it's kind of like the training run is a training run, but uh, if you want to push the training mode, you can if you want to. Right. That's correct. And then, mm. like I said before, if you meet certain those certain conditions from pushing it hard enough, you actually loop into a harder difficulty version of what is Novin's course. And then doing that again will loop you into the last three levels of the expert course. What do you th what do you think comparing like, let's say, an expert, just a straight expert course, course run versus this kind of training loops like? the maybe why someone would want to do that um i think honestly it's more of just if you really want if you don't if you already got like your survival clears from dx and you want to like push the game more that's probably where you might be interested in just training or if you're somebody that likes kind of ha has kind of more of like a perfectionist like mindset to approaching their games where it's like you know i want to no miss no bomb like anything I can and like hit certain square requirements. That's where I think that might interest people to check out training, and, you know, loop it into that one's course. Cool, cool. Thanks for that clarification. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, there are a lot of things to honestly like cover in this, so I'm not sure if you guys want to actually get into the run right away or yeah, if let's go for it. About. Yeah, okay. let's go for it if we can explain on the run. Did you want to uh, put a timestamp uh, YouTube replay in the um, chat? Or you want to start at? Or did you want to start it's just, the whole run? Uh, the whole, you can actually just start from the very beginning for the okay. first run that I did. Gotcha. All right, so we're doing the uh, the one that ends in Q-M, right? Uh, let me see. I think it's the link is IF8. Or the, the URL. Q-dash. It should be um, underscore IF8. Okay, cool. Right in DX train plus snob it's 1.5 all. 9.6 okay. million. Gotcha. All right, thanks for clarifying that. I see that. Okay. All right, I'm ready on my end. Yeah, I'm ready as well. So whenever you want to yeah. give us the timestamp, I'm cool. It's, it's just at the very beginning of that one. Oh, you got it. Okay. I guess then we'll start with the countdown then. Yeah. All right. I'll count us down. Okay. okay. All right. Three, two, one, go. All right. So this is my run of DX training. I use 30 hertz auto fire on buttons one and two, and then a 10 hertz auto on button two for low power. At the very beginning here, um, you're just getting powered up as usual. Um, but actually coming up here, you quickly come onto our first golden radar requirement. And in order to do this, there are these two souls towers on that need to be uncovered on these like islands and the water here. Uh -huh. Once you destroy those, you can take out the four island structures and then you hover over the missile boxes spot. You want to get missiles here, and then you basically tap while hitting the missiles on the golden radar and then destroy it to maximize point gain. Then you'll get your first 200,000 from destroying the radar there. Um, then here is just you fight some enemies, um, pick up a couple medals along the way up here in a little bit. I think here, um, there's some set spawn patterns, but then after the spawn pattern, um, what you might notice here is what training likes to do sometimes is um, there are these like mid-sized enemies that appear and it can pick multiple different types. So like that one that's usually the destructible ones, that's not always guaranteed. It might throw like a wide plane or it might throw like 
a bigger enemy that like shoots eight bullets at you. So you have to kind of keep this in mind when making your route because sometimes you might have to account for like a different type of mid-sized enemy coming your way and know like how do you deal with that at the moment while being cognizant of whatever requirements you need to meet. How often do you think that uh, RNG versus uh, for these uh, enemies, does that happen very often in this uh, mode, in training mode? Uh, it happens a bit, but oh. it's not like... It's more. It's a bit more pronounced like later on in the training one zero course. Um, right here, I uncovered the second scroll and radar by hovering over the three souls there, but not destroying them. And then going to the right of that tree, um, hanging out in that spot there, and that caused the golden radar to appear and you destroyed it. That's um, interesting. Just, you have to hold off on the soul towers to like make golden radar. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not it's something I actually had to like reference the saucy guide here for mm. because it's like very hard to pick up on the stuff by your own or unless you're just watching other players. Suppose you might naturally figure that out eventually if you're just like, oh, I know these three are there, so I'll yeah. just go across all three right. first, and then it's like, oh, Correct. what have I done? But it might take more time. Um, that plane destroyed there. Um, most of the time, I usually get it if I am able to clear out all the enemies back there. Sometimes it doesn't pop up. I couldn't explain why that doesn't happen. Right now, um, after picking those metals there, I continue to take care of these planes to avoid getting backed up in a corner and then making sure that I can get as power up as possible with Red before some additional enemies pop up on the screen that we encounter our first set of mid-boss tanks right up here, which also is going to be a requirement for the third radar. Basically, the way that it works is this tank you see right here, you can blow the hatch off, but you don't want to actually completely destroy it. You want to wait until the second mid-boss tank appears. Destroy the second mid-boss tank, and then destroy the first one while covering some additional souls. And then you'll see the golden radar pop up in about 20, 30 seconds from now. That's some pro gear extend strategy right there. <laughs> yeah, I was just yeah, going to say. Yeah. Kind of, that kind of feels like it in stage one, four, right? That's where the... You're going uh, vertically, but still in horizontal mode, right? And you have those two mm -hmm. tanks, and you weaken the one on top, go to the one on bottom. Yeah, basically same execution, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Or you weaken <laughs> the one on bottom, go kill the one on top, kill the one on the bottom, get the extent. Right. Um, wow. So once you see like the house come to view, you can hang a little bit below that bridge area on the right-hand side of the house below, and then the gold radar will be right there. You have to wait for the house to appear? Well, it's more, it's just like a positioning reference. Oh, okay. Um, like, I use that to line myself up and then just to cover the radar after destroying all the enemies that appear on that bridge. I'm trying to get the cars that they come out. My car! My, oh no! <laughs> there could be two of my them. My car! <laughs> yeah, two cars? Yeah, potentially two cars. That's crazy. So are the Miklases appearing because of like the metal pickups that you're getting? Correct. It's the same okay. um, as the other modes where if you pick up three flashing metals, um, a Miklas will appear and then if you pick that Miklas up as it's with flinching, with the one six, one six of a second timing, you get like 50k. Thanks for clarifying that. So let's see. Now we go into the city section here where Right about here, I need to be fully powered up because that's when you start to see a lot more of these random like mid-sized enemies pop up in between like the tank spawns on the top and the sides. So trying to have all that power up is especially useful because as I mentioned earlier, you want to have the enemy destruction rate be 99% or above and you don't want to miss an enemy here if you can. Um, 
because of this, um, that's why sometimes I might not be going for Sir Metal so they can help it, because it's worth more to just have a higher enemy destruction rate than worrying about metals as much. Is that because the enemy destruction rate gives you a, a multiplier at the end of the stage? No, it, it it's more like it's a you, have, you need a one to get the loop requirement, and then it also um, you get more additional bonus points with the course evaluation at the end. Oh, I see, I see. Um, Thank back you. there, the bridge, I uncovered and destroyed two souls, and then uncovered another soul at, in the water up there. Went back to that position on the right side of the. Um, roadway there, and that's where the four of Golden Radar is. In this um, kind of like C section here, um, I try to prioritize making sure the missiles hit to destroy the boats as soon as possible, because up here I need to kill this formation of big um, gunboats slash like mid-sized enemies as fast as possible because we need the positioning to set up for the fifth goal on radar. Up here we use our Vulcan's spread shot to disable the two tanks there and then you have to um, squeeze in between the souls to hit that middle one then move around this four souls on the outer edges to cause them to disappear into the ground and then coming up here, there's going to be a little section where you can destroy some structure pieces. And with that, that will allow us to uncover our fifth golden radar, which actually gives a lot more points than it realized looking back on the um, video. It's like 800K or something crazy. Oh, wow. So at that point, this is almost, that's like almost half your score right now. Yeah, exactly. Is it because it's the fifth one that it gives so much, or why? Why do you get so much from this? Uh, one? I think I don't know. I think they just decided that on a whim. I don't think it's really been explained in reviews. Ah. It's also maybe it could be to it that because it's the most difficult of the golden raiders to get, maybe they they figure like we'll just throw the player bone and give them a bit more score for going out their way. Yeah, you said, so was that one tied to the previous thing you just, uh, like, two screens down, or was that just... Yeah, um, oh, was. so when this, okay. yeah, so when I did the, um, you know, going in between the soul towers, and then uncovering the one in the middle, but then going over the other ones to make them go back to the ground, that's, yeah, that's kind of just trying the structures, like, that's something I felt like you need to watch another player do. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff. Now. And I would believe it because when I was looking at the score history of this mode, as well as some of the other modes, it's like people were already like getting to like training 1.8 within like a month or two of its release. Damn. And then made it into the loop like a month or two later. <laughs> um, yeah, so coming up here, we got past um, the tricky bomblets part back there, which it's not too bad if you're aggressive enough, but if you're just kind of playing defensively, you won't destroy it in time to avoid the fire from the other planes coming down. Um, here I'm just playing it safe mostly, just trying to make sure I destroy all the enemies popping up from the side hatches here. But... You must be perfect. <laughs> Perfect isn't good enough. There should be a train section that appears pretty shortly here, which now we're coming into another hidden score tech here where we actually want these trains to be uncovered as soon as possible. And the idea is use once the whole train is like out in the open, you hit the front part first on the left and then hit all the components on the right. And if you do this correctly, you get 10k and an additional bomb that pops out. If you do this with all four trains, you get 10k, 20k, 40k, and then 80k and then an additional four bombs. Which means if you're doing everything at that point, that's 
pretty much like an additional 360,000 points. Did you miss a train car there? I missed a couple, yeah, but it's okay. it's more just a scoring technique. Um, if you're worried about just looping into it, it's not necessarily required. What is required, though, is in this next part here, there's those three additional soul towers hidden in those trees back there. I needed to uncover and destroy all of those. And then over here at that um, patch you see on the left-hand side near the tank, you uncover the last gold radar that you need. And you can also uncover an additional hidden seven golden radar at the very same spot in arcade. It can be a bit difficult to hit though, and it's, it's not strictly required. As long as you get the six golden radars, you are pretty much good to go. Well, I take it the train cars did contribute to the destruction rate though? Yes, that's so true. You were allowed to miss just that one. I think you can miss like a little, even a little more than that, as long as you just destroy, make sure you destroy it in time. Yeah, over, over the tank. It's funny, like those trains kind of remind me of, uh, but like Battle Garega, right? Is that where like you let the train go out all the way, and if you kill it, then you get a bomb, right? You get a full bomb. But if you do it prematurely, you won't. There definitely is, yeah, and the similar similar thing there. Yeah. yeah. And like other shmups do. Yeah. Excuse me, is that Garega or is that Bat Rider? Yeah. It's Garega Stage 1. You oh, can, okay. you can yeah. like, do it to get the option items, I think. Maybe get a bomb to it. Yeah. I forget. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Level 0 clear. It's an oxymoron. Yeah, level, level 0. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, what does it mean? So, yeah. I, I mean, think, yeah. I guess it's yeah. just... I don't know why they picked that number in general, but it could just be... You know, by de facto, it's a training course, so it's not part of the main, like, course set. Ah, okay. Oh, nice 90 month. But Yeah. Is that, like, programming indexing? Like, where they start from zero instead of one? Uh, I don't know if I can tell you that, but... Uh, um, just to clarify, back there, I used missiles on that boss to quick kill it, because it, you can't do the quick kill fast enough if you, if you have homing. Um, I also did not use the start button trick that you could do on this arcade version where you put a coin on top of the start button to guarantee it got high fighting spirit slash guts bonus there so oh, yeah it's still okay enough and i meet all the other requirements so now i loop into what is basically novin's course but loop two difficult to you and is denoted as training one one for one five Yeah, there's a main bug there, which, for whatever reason, um, doesn't render that one field there correctly until you fully spawn in. Um, at this point, um, you may be wondering, like, why did I bomb back there? Since I know, like, my training consistency at the 1315 boss was, like, not good enough to loop into Expert, I figure I'll get rid of the extra thermonuclear bomb so that I can, in two bombs time, get back to having the full yellow cluster stock and then just get fit some 50k bonuses from that. Oh, you get a bonus for having all the same color? Correct. If you have okay. all your if you have your bomb stock maxed down and all the same color, additional bomb pickups are the same color are 50k each. So it gets pretty substantial if you can continually get those as well as the ridiculous bonuses. So is it just that that training that we just saw that was like the unique stage to DX then? That's correct. Well, yeah. there's that and there was also the stage nine that I mentioned last oh, time. Oh yeah, that okay. That's if you special need the level. no miss, no bomb requirements, um, then you access that in expert course. And I did some stage state practice too on this, and you can actually do this as well if you no miss, no bomb training. All of training course training one one for one eight. You can actually access one nine, which is on loop three rank. But <laughs> I don't think I've seen anyone actually do this in runs because, um, as you'll see later on, because of the way the item order works in this particular um, training course, you're not going to get um, the weapon you need for the training one six boss and you'll likely need to expend bombs. Hmm. 
so yeah, the walkers here, um, you can take them out pretty much the same way you could in the other courses. Just go for that sus by point blank. Those are some fast boss bullets. Yep. They are. It gets pretty nasty, especially from this point on. Well, actually, no, not the stage here, but actually like two, three later on, like that boss on loop two rank is, it's so hard to keep track of stuff. But for the most part, like, um, if you manage to loop here, um, the first two stages are going to be no problem, honestly. Um, the first major hurdle you'll probably notice is when you get to the 1-2 boss, if you want to um, not speed kill it, but go for trying to get all the medals, or as many medals as you can. Yeah. Other than that, like, it's been mentioned on other episodes, it's like, really, you're just kind of playing the same techniques as loop one rank, it's just you have less space to work with. I do like how fast the bullets go, though. Oh, yeah. That's one nice thing about, um, even like these earlier games compared to some of the other random entries in place, they manage to keep you on your toes. Like, I was playing right at three a while back, I remember that game, I felt pretty underwhelmed even on arcade double two of how frantic that game got. Um, yeah, so for the mid boss strat there, I kind of goofed, didn't go above like I usually do, because I I'd forgotten like the reload time when it transitions to that second phase is shorter. So you can dodge it like that. It is a bit more risky doing it that way. <laughs> You're right. Well then like writing three is kinda weird. It doesn't have a second loop as I recall. Nope, right? no second yeah. loop. The only so. thing you could do is like um, change adjust the descending upwards to do like ultimate, which seems like a backpedal it... after DX. Not having a second loop or any of these crazy side things, so it did have some of the secrets still. Yeah, well, it's then also like when they were probably trying to think of like a writing game that would sell in like the mid 2000s, they probably were playing it pretty conservatively with you know, balancing your expectations with an average player base that's going to arcades. Yeah, like and also developer time investment and probably resources. Yeah, well. that's. That's true. They talked about that in the interview where they just didn't have as much time to pull stuff up in three because of the master schedule they had for Type X releases. Um, I just wanted to ask, are there the same amount of golden radars in each level? Um, you mean in this compared to the Noms counterpart? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's still just the one. Um, Golden Radar and training one one for one five. That way they can kind of think like, oh, this is how many Golden Radars are in each stages, so uh, it's constant. Yeah, exactly. Kind of figure it out and see where it's going yeah. along. Honestly, they probably just reuse the, like the Nolan's course assets and then just you know switch the rank modifier to like loop two settings for this. Cool. Um. Here, I just used the normal quick kill strat because um, I had been getting like killed left and right trying to um, get some of these metal pickups here on that. It just wasn't working out, even when I was trying to replicate other strategies I saw in existing replays of training 1 1 for 1 5. You should get like a bonus for like the boss la landing on that building back there. <laughs> oh yeah. 
It's crazy that they have like that detail panned out. I have to imagine it's different yeah. for if it lands in the water and there's some other scaffoldings or whatever. Yeah, I think usually the way it works is if it falls on like whatever terrain it falls on is what will get affected graphically. Um, That's insane. But I don't think any game really did the whole like drop stuff onto enemies for bonus points of like Sengeki Striker. <laughs> Yeah, it seems like there's some potential there. Yeah. I don't think any of the writing games really do that either. <laughs> I, I mean, it's kind of, it'd be kind of weird, but still kind of interesting, I guess. Well, it's like in Flying Shark, when you, you can shoot down uh, airborne enemies, and then when they, like, yes. crash down, they can actually hit the ground enemies. Yeah, like, you can that's... actually do that in this game, too. <laughs> oh, really? Nice. Yeah, there's been some very isolated cases where that can happen. It just usually doesn't happen because the flying enemies tend to usually be in separate places. Compared yeah, that's, to, that's insane you know. stuff. Yeah, I, I found that very cool when I noticed that for the first time. <laughs> I mean, it actually like gives like the game like 3D, like a 3D feel when shit does yeah. something like that going on. It's yeah. pretty cool. And it doesn't even have to be 3D. Yeah, exactly. Even if they technically did use 3D for the whole shrapnel calculations, so. Oh, they did. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. There's, there's like a separate like, um, what's it called, like, ASIC chip, which basically calculates like the shrapnel, like, in three different coordinates, with X, Y, Z axis. That's pretty impressive. So it's not just the title screen 3D thing. Yeah. The title pretty screen cool. thing is just like CG, but yeah, oh, okay. like um, all the shrapnel. I'm pretty sure like there's texturing effects that are applied to like stuff like the stage six and stage seven asteroids. Yeah, it's some pretty interesting hardware. Yeah, like they really spent a lot of money just to like make it look as good as it does. And, I mean, I think they did an amazing job. Kind of wish they had kept some of that in subsequent releases. I wonder if this was the the last PCB that they did that was just kind of the standalone before they went to SPI Sabo, uh, like the hardware. Uh, kind of, yeah. Was that out already? Uh, I think SPI came out a year later because Viper yeah. One was like the first release on that, hmm. and then a lot of Battle Balls, and then you get like um, what is it, the Rider Fighter series? Yes. And that's it, as far as I can recall. So yeah, there with the gunboats, it does get a bit annoying with how fast stuff can get, but thankfully their HP is not as bad as their expert counterparts, so you can still handle them pretty easily. That section is pretty scary back there too, if you're not careful. Um, so now we're coming up on the 1-3 boss, which... I have to actually investigate this a little more myself, but I remember I saw another replay out there where um, you can apparently quick kill this um, boss here and you don't need to worry about not getting the enemy destruction. So, I never personally saw a difference in that myself when playing these runs, but maybe I have to see if there's other ROM sets out there that actually get away with this. Were you moving down to kill like those front turrets? Yeah, so with the front turrets there, I used a bomb because I realized the damage output wasn't going to be quick enough to um, kill those and then get the front cover off in time to do oh. the my blank strategy there. Because um, on that specific one, to speed kill it, you know, you want to pop the cover up as soon as possible and then get a fast firing rate on the very top of the boss and probably have it slightly equal so that, like, you know, when shooting on the right, nothing comes quickly on the left can take care of that as needed. But there, it worked out pretty well. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I think coming up here is... Um, you can do the same strategy of, like, quick killing stuff here. Um, I think right about here is I make a really dumb error because I panicked and was a bit worried that golden plane was going to come quicker than it did and yeah, moved slightly too far to the right and got equipped. Yeah, 
it's good that you're able to recover so quickly with uh, the fairy. You could shoot yeah. the fairy right, and then you then you won't get any items. Is that right? That's that's only a right of fighters thing. Oh, okay. Um, in this game, the fairy will always drop items. Okay. It, it's just the main difference here is um, since you pretty much start with like a P upon every death in these in this course. Um, it does make it so that you can recover pretty much on your feet as long as you pick up a sub weapon item and then pick up a the P afterwards. Since that will bring yours. Oh, go ahead. Oh no, I noticed this also disrupted like your bombs too, your bomb stock of being one. Is that true? Correct. Or? Well, it was more like I accidentally picked up other bombs that were a different color. So okay. The, it's it's a problem where it's like um, ideally you want everything to be the same stock, but the problem is that like now everything's like all that loot two rank. So now it is the bullets faster, but enemies have like slow, faster reload time. So it's like you just gotta get moving. Okay. You get yeah. Get cornered and like have another death. You gotta like, prioritize. You just, you just don't have time to wait around. To, to for those bombs to rotate to the the color that you want, right? Yeah, especially if it's like a survival focus based run, like, because basically you don't want to get in a position where it's like, oh, great, I don't have like, I have like a full Vulcan shop, but now I don't have any like sup up in power because you just can't kill stuff fast enough. <laughs> That's missile. Yeah, it just, uh, it, it's doing something on its own. That missile or that homing missile's a hero. <laughs> oh yeah. It's got a tale to tell. It, it like went home in the end. <laughs> homing yeah. to home. Oh, <laughs> it's like the twin hawk. Going home. Uh, being a family man. <laughs> twin hawk helper. <laughs> Save me. All right, so this boss here, um, thankfully, it, you can approach it the same way as Nobbins. You just use the missiles to deal damage. The main problem is making sure you don't get hit by one of these diamond turrets here. It's pretty easy to get clipped by them. Um, the main, main part should be blown off pretty soon here. But then here, um, you can just pretty much point blank this. Just kill it in no time. Nice, nice. Yeah, also something to notice too. Um, this is only something I notice happens in like the novice course, but it, that's thing about like the hidden metal at the end before you see like the stage clear bonus from two is only carried over towards like the novice course here. It doesn't actually happen in expert. Let me see. So yeah, here this tricky this one five opener here is a bit dicey because you do want to play it safe until you can get homing back, which is not until the middle portion of the stage. There, I accidentally moved back too quickly and unfortunately um, got clipped by the three-pronged tur turret from that tank there. So here, I am kind of panicking a little bit, but mostly what I'm focused on is what can I do to just get to that at the course at this point because I don't have any extra lives. <laughs> wow, this is real clutch moment, right? Yeah, exactly. It's just make do or die. And frankly, this is... Like... Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, but this is also where, like, good fundamental knowledge pays off because it's like, since I played this so much at this point that I understand, like, where all the spawns are happening, I don't have to worry about like boarding bombs anymore. I can just play it like I'll bomb this part here so that it kills this enemy, etc. Um, 
So thankfully now that I have like at least a little bit of homing power, that helps with this section. Allows you to kill some stuff off screen, even though it's not ideal compared to having a full powered um, homing and sub weapon. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're you're panicking um, too because you didn't have a sub weapon at the time, right? Yeah, and yeah. yeah, and there too, that tank that comes from the left is really kind of deceitful. Like it'll just fire you pretty much immediately, so you need to have like something to take care of it at that um, point. Because you're half trying to scroll it off screen, right? Yeah, the, the, but you but you need to kill like the turrets that are popping off them the left there because if you don't they'll just stay like at the top there as the screen scrolls down and just continually fire at you oh yeah because they're moving yeah they'll correct move. okay. and they'll be stationary like at a certain point but remain in view again this reminds me of like flat fight, flat fight. yeah <laughs> yeah there um had to use another bomb because i wasn't sure i was gonna make it back over in time after the freaky dogs there but at this point, when I get the when I see the PR item, it's like, okay, I can at least recover fully before the actual boss. It's good. How long would you say that power up stay on the screen so you can kind of like? Uh, I'd have to check, but it's probably okay. like at least a good eight, ten seconds. Oh, like they, okay. They do like three or four seconds before going off the screen, like completely. Cool. So you have enough time. It's just. You have to kind of plan out, like, you know, based on my stage knowledge, like, when would be a good time to, like, pick this up? Like, it's a very common thing in both 2 and DX, where it's, you get, or even the first game, too, like, you kind of, the immediate desire is, like, I want to pick this up to get fully powered up. Yes. But then you can get surprised by, like, a tank popping from the side, because now you have less room to react, and you end up getting clipped and get in a worse position than you were before. Because you're rushing up towards the top of the screen to like get it right correct or to the yeah. left or the right to, to... yeah exactly um yeah so this boss here is not much different than um it's like one counterpart but because stuff is noticeably faster and i'm just going for a base survival clue here you're gonna see those bombs come in handy on that last phase because it's just so hard to read Wait till there to uh, pop up over the top, and then from there, that first spread you can do it like that every time. But I definitely bomb this because it's just so hard to react to those the random bullet rain spread. Especially when the boss is close, that's what makes that hard. Wow. Just, in, just ensure the kill there. Spend that cash. Yeah. Nice. We have no lives left. Nice clutch. Yeah. <laughs> felt pretty good honestly um so then after this bonus here um you actually get another um training course evaluation here where um again just check to see enemy destruction rate the amount of secrets found and then your guts rating and then give you a additional bonus based on that So let's see, the enemy destruction rate was, yeah, it dropped all the way down to 97. But if you get like pretty much most of the secrets there, um, you're guaranteed to get a pretty high bonus regardless. That gives me 9.6 million to end that and a 63% rating for doing both the training slash, or I guess just doing the knowledge course in general. Isn't that an F, though? <laughs> it's a D minus. <laughs> oh, okay, then passing, barely. It could be remedial, depending on which university you go to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, so yeah, that ends it for as far as I made it to. Um, training here, but we do have another run for you guys that actually showcases the last three stages of the training course here. Awesome. 
still a very good run. You know, you just oh. kind of like had to complete it, you know, like, yeah, exactly. Know. Sometimes you just have to sub optimize to achieve whatever immediate goal you're trying to reach. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a good, uh, thing to have in your pocket where it's like you're on your second to last or one last life and you're just like, I got to finish, you know? Yeah, instead exactly. Of, instead of like, uh, do you find that you restart a lot of runs? And sometimes to like ah uh, this is like i'm not gonna do it um if it's like early on yeah. yeah if it's like already like 15 20 minutes in like you know i talked to my or oh, like friend group about this too but yes you know because i show them my like, runs because i'm practicing that it's like well even though like this is a big setback like score wise i might as well finish it out just to see if i can like either experiment with other strats or just either gain consistency in certain sections like i think it's and it's also good too, like you can use this as a reference point when you're looking at replays that are like, why couldn't I not avoid that they're like a chump <laughs> and just, you know, use that as learning material. Yeah. Like. Cool. Thanks for explaining that, because I think, uh, I think it's maybe that sometimes to have the attitude of like, let's finish the credit. Yeah. Or like you've made the mistake now lie in it a little bit, like if you're further along in the run to kind of like kind of work yeah. your your um, tenacity muscle so to yeah speak, I don't right um you also don't want to get in the mindset of just being stuck in like stage one or two reset hell and then you end up hating the game because you can't be at like your really high bar of like standard immediately yes. because yes. like I knew people who had played like DX and then two and then just never really pushed as far as they probably could have because they're just kind of focused on the whole like i have to get everything absolutely perfect true true and i think that's such a trap especially in uh sdg slash mops yeah it is like locked. yeah exactly you can get locked in like you know you're making the same mistakes and just getting endlessly frustrated and just and get stuck in like sort of a mental wall yeah yeah Cool. Thanks for expounding on that. Uh, so there's there's some advice here from SDG Weekly to you all. Like if you're doing your runs, that uh, you, know, you don't get in reset syndrome or restart. What do they call it? Restart syndrome, right? It could be. Yeah, it's like restart reset syndrome. Re uh, reset hell. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Or reset right. city. Also, don't forget. Oh, reset city. That's yeah. a, that's yeah. a good one. I like. You that end up one. living there. Yeah. Don't move in. <laughs> also, don't move yeah. into reset city. Reset also, yeah. city. <laughs> yeah, Boston. That's a good point that you mentioned too. Like, you want to get the burden lifted off for trying to like get the root. It, you basically want to mix and match like practice and then like full runs to see like. Who are the results of my practice? What do I still need to improve on? What can I optimize here? Like, I think it's good to bounce between the two of them. Or else yeah. you'll go insane. Yeah, yeah. And you <laughs> have to live in Reset City. Yeah. Reset where everybody's City. insane yeah. and everybody, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. They just all eat bread or something. Yeah, they all <laughs> do the same thing every day. They're yeah. all just eating like, like bottles of hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bread with hot sauce. Got yeah, I go uh, seventy-seven. It's like Groundhog Day for schmups, right? You just like uh, yeah. do it, but it's like bad Groundhog Day. Um, yeah, yeah. It's good to play it out. I mean, you know, you gotta have yeah. fun. You know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Why would we be playing I, games if we weren't having fun? <laughs> yeah, that's right. And also, like. You work out your not only your tenacity but like clutch muscle right like you're mm -hmm. you're in like the last stage or no it's your last part of your run you're on your last life and it's like uh you might have that panic that anxiety that just builds up so much because you're not in that situation all the time and you can just, like yeah you know if uh you're at the end too and you you game over if you finish it out strong you can just add your score that you got after you game over or whatever be yeah. Like, oh, okay. Well, that's what I would have gotten. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right. Without further ado, let's get to the second part. Uh, okay. Where you're talking about that other. Now, this is from uh, 
Fujimida YY Arcade in uh, in Tokyo. In, in Tokyo, like around Ikebukuro, I think that's what it was. I was doing a little research. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll let you take it away. Yeah. yeah so um, first things first, just um, the timestamp is 3305, just for reference. But um, this is actually something I saw. Um, I followed the YY has their um, YouTube Twitch streaming channel as like Sap One Nuck One, where they regularly stream like shooting games. I think they also stream some other stuff. But anyways, um, I remember about like a week ago or something like that I saw them like streaming, and the one of the games I noticed they had was like running DX. So that I was looking for their Twitch bots and came across this one particular run, which. Um, the play it's an unknown player because he puts his initials as triple a but he actually got to the 2-8 in this run so i thought since he had some pretty um good fundamental rooting for the last part of training i would just show off like i would download like the first half of the run which is his training one zero for two one and then for this episode i want to show off his one five boss strategy and then his roots from 1-6 through 2-1 and just explain a little bit of what's going on there. So, whenever you guys are ready. Okay, 3305, right? Yep, that's right. Okay, cool. All right, I'll, uh, I'll count us in. Here we go, three. All right, who wants to do the count? Oh yeah, I'll <laughs> count us in. Sorry, I, did, I, did, I forgot to push the talk. Yeah, I'll call us in. So three, two, one, go. All right. So the reason why I start off at this particular area here is um, what I mentioned before. In order to advance from the training loop, training looping into the novice, and then training looping into expert, it requires you to have that same enemy destruction rate as well as. Um, 100% gold and radars, no deaths, and no bombs used. Because of what you saw before, where I was having to bomb like crazy on the last part of this boss, in my, I think a lot of players are not going to want to put themselves through that, just to have a lot of runs be like reset and you know wasted. But what I saw this guy did that I thought was particularly ingenious is he kills the first phase. And in the second phase here, what he's going to do is actually time out the boss so that he can still meet the no deaths, no bombs used, and he'll still have enough to get the enemy destruction rate to advance to expert. Wow, that's crazy. And um, in addition to this, I think in the right into episode, um, Saucy uses a similar strategy when he fights this boss on three, loop three. But he actually does the um, third phase for the boss timeout and just dodges in between the patterns. That's certainly an option you can do too. But I honestly find this example might actually be more. When I was looking at it, I was like, this might actually be more applicable, like strat wise, just because with the way the pattern is, it's just, it throws like those spreads out that you could just like, you know, tap dodge from left to right. That might be more doable, honestly. <laughs> Doesn't this last a while, or does it end soon? Doesn't this last a while, or doesn't doesn't it end soon? Um, I forget. It lasts for about another. Oh yeah, actually, it is a bit long, so if you want, you can just skip to 37. Yeah, I thought it was kind of long. Yeah, it's 37, 30. Okay, it's, like a th it's like a three minute time or something like that. Yeah, because I remember I was actually watching uh, that channel and I saw that they were doing this. <laughs> and I was like, how long does this take? Yeah. Okay, so we'll, we'll go 37, 30. That's what we're going to go to here. Yeah. I'll, I'm queued up whenever you're ready. Yep, I'm there. Okay, I'm there. All right. I'm there. Okay, uh, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. So as you can see, the, when the boss times out, it just 
it just kind of despawns off screen like that. <laughs> that's um, kind of weird, but yeah. No comment there. Um, yeah, that's kind of weird. So yeah, you have to deal with that if you want to use the timeout strategy, but eh, it's whatever. <laughs> Also, if I remember right, just as a quick blurb, um, that stage five background there, I think it's actually based off like, I can't, I don't remember if it's a digitized photo or if it's like an actual like hand drawn background based off like an actual port and like near Tokyo area, or at least like the cool. development site. I thought that was Eight. pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, incidentally, uh, that channel has been running Pink Sweets alongside Raiden DX sometimes. Oh, and I've yeah, been, I I've been watching that because I've been I've been peeping some uh, strats and stuff. Cool. <laughs> and uh, incidentally, Pink Sweets' his cloud level has uh, Venice as a, a stage background, oh. aerial an aerial photo. So it's kind of a weird coincidence, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Actually, it was just they, they Yeah, they go live usually uh, on the weekend, so definitely check out that channel. And, and I, I don't think I'm following the YouTube, so I need to do that. Mm -hmm. But uh, they got mm -hmm. good stuff. They, they they have an Exa Arcadia machine. They, so they got nice. stuff on that too. Hmm. Okay. I seen them playing some Toho game on that. Oh, that's probably the was it like Sakura Fantastica. It's based on like Fantastic Daimaku Festival 2, if I remember, but with like faster patterns and some other adjustments. Um, okay, so when you enter um, was training 1 6, it's basically the same as uh, expert level 6 for 8 onwards, but now the loot rank is equivalent to loop 3, so at this point it gets very, very fast and can be quite difficult to react to. So. Knowing him, he's probably going to need to employ any sort of tank ceiling where he, it's possible to do so, and just a lot of tap dodging. For metal collecting, I doubt he's really going to do a whole lot because enemies at this point are just firing so fast and the reload time is so short, it makes it way too risky to like really go for those metals all the time. Didn't you say, uh, does, so at this point, is it now loop three difficulty? That's expert? correct. After it's, one five. So yes. It's interesting how it changes like mid course, like mid uh, stage progression. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool though. Yeah, it's, it's uh, interesting. Yeah. Good. It's like, you know, kind of rewards you or punishes you, when, whatever you, however you want to look at it. <laughs> yeah. For, for making it through and trying it out. Yeah, exactly. It's that's notably faster, I gotta say. Yeah, it, it's a very big difference compared to like loop one at this point. Maybe and... one could say lightning fast, like Raiden. <laughs> Lightning. Oh, oh man. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good stuff. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, so I imagine there he got rid of the bomb because he's trying to get back to Yellow Cluster again. I think, though, for this sub weapon item, he's actually going to want to keep that on screen because we're going to see a particularly interesting point-blank strategy that you can do on the 1-6 boss when you don't have the weapon you need because due to the way that the item order works here it's actually um it's stuck somewhere around 29 or 30 so because of this um it only drops bombs in the stage and normally you actually would want the item carrier to drop a weapon change item so that you get to blue but because of the way that the item order is here even if you like delay one item carrier earlier on training course for example um you're still only going to get like the bomb drop 
unless you're just wanting to play significantly more risky early on training and somehow delay like three or four item carriers to get that weapon change item. That's just not very feasible. So instead, what they'll do here is go up to the top of the screen of the boss, and then you can just deploy a cluster bomb here and kill it like that. It's pretty much the only safe way to like really deal with this boss. If you try to hang at the bottom of the screen, it's just going to throw out like those lightning fast like spread patterns. And then like the center cannon throws out like the three bullets. And then we'll also throw out like the huge spread once you get to its second phase. And also because of the reason he used the bomb there, um, he, he can no longer access um, stage nine if he wanted to. But then again, I haven't seen anybody like access um, this version of stage nine, like no bomb, no miss, because it's just so difficult survival wise that for like the 90% of players, it's just not worth it. Damn, did it slow down there for a sec, or was that just me? I think it slowed down a little bit, yeah. It's kind of cool. Yeah. I think there he wanted to probably bomb in the last um, set of, like, what do you call those enemies? They're just, like, I guess, like, little gray ships that come down. Because with missile, you just can't really kill all of them that efficiently compared to if you had homie, and so it makes more sense just to use the bomb there and then just wait until he got homing back in this section right here. And I think he also does this mid-boss here without any bombs, so... Oh no, he actually... He does the strategy there where, um... If you don't want to risk um, getting sniped by one of the tanks there, you just throw a bomb on top, or you can actually throw a lower on the actual turrets to get rid of the top headpiece, get the spread to misdirect, and then give yourself enough room to work with, with to deal with all those en other enemies that appear. Oh yeah, and then this section here, um, because of the way stuff is so fast, you just don't have a lot of time. You have to be... Yeah, see, that one oh, enemy man. didn't despawn off screen, so he was forced to bomb there. Probably panicked. So clutch. Well, it seemed like he was ready for it, though. Yeah. I mean, it... Especially on like, these higher loops, it's very possible for that to happen, because just... You know, they... It's, re it's the less reload time and the faster bullets, but... They just hang on screen for so long that sometimes they just w part of like the last wave won't fully be off screen when the next wave spawns. Other than that, though, you can actually use a lot of your same loop one strategies to deal with um, many of these other enemies here. The boss is going to be the exact same as loop one strategy wise, where we just point blank the center component and um, move to the left when it does like the spread on top. Yeah, you can also move up when it, it does like the second spread because you actually now have enough move, room to move up whereas you don't in the first go around. Which is why it went either to you can either go left or right. <clears throat> um, so it's gonna continue on still then. Yeah, it continues on it because now we're in one eight, and then 
after that it'll loop infinitely on using the same layout as expert course but on loop four rank which is the maximum difficulty this game reaches oh it does go to one eight here okay correct but they said the loop difficulty went up no it won't go up until after he beats the stage oh okay okay like when it goes to two loop one when it goes to stage one of expert course but yeah these as you can see like the tanks that show like that d-shape like outwards they are very tricky to deal with now along with the deterrent shots so he had to use a bomb back there probably just to make sure they wasn't going to get snowballed by all the additional enemies spawning in from the top so let's damn that was close yeah there um i actually that's something i've been strategizing recently too where i found like it's a more beneficial to go to the right when it does that second um the second like aim sh set of shots at you but he was like so far to the left like that tank would have sniped him from there oh interesting I, he takes those um turrets out on the right side before going to the left most people usually just point blank that seven way um plane there So let's see. I think he might use a bomb on this tank here. It's curious to see. Oh no, he's just gonna sit back. Okay. Interesting. So he basically um, just misdirects the shots from the mid boss tank to the left side so that he can deal with some of those enemies that appear on the right side and then kills it with enough time to spare before it, that turret on the left shows up. <laughs> then now we come up to this final gauntlet here where we have these purple enemies that have like the really fast streams of aim bullets at you. really kind of want to be on top of making sure the guys shooting like the aim streams are dead because otherwise they'll fire like another stream at you as they exit the screen that can be difficult to deal with <laughs> my god yeah, the way he dodged that there Ooh, that's crazy The statues you can just um, dodge on the sides. That's, once you get the angle positioning down, it's not too bad. And then you got this final gauntlet here that comes up to the final boss. Probably just bomb that there just to be safe, since Brutal. there are a lot of those tanks coming in from the sides. to the final Mother Haven boss here. Um, yeah, so just same strategy as before. Just you, now you just account for stuff being so much faster and making sure that those tanks that appear on the side don't catch you when you're trying to dodge like in the middle. Yeah, pretty tricky. Yeah, so much faster, especially your spread shots the same color as like yeah the too, right? It's like yeah, it can create some weird overlap sometimes. Um, here he, he's using the safe spot as I mentioned before in the expert run where you can just sit like at the very bottom here. The tank will, for the most part, for like absolute majority of the time, will just spawn on the top left and then i'm guessing he went over to the right there, there just to take care of that lone tank that spawns on the right side oh man oh interesting Whoa. so does it like that
Yeah, there's multiple ways you can deal with that um, that slow spread that it did there. But I'm guessing you just went with what was most consistent. You can either like start from the center and go tap left like three times and then go back to the right. But it looks like he started from the far left and then just tapped to the right three times and then went for the gaps. So, yeah. Um, just to clarify from here on out, um, you don't, because he didn't reach stage nine, of course, you don't get the loot bonus or whatever it is. Um, it'll just drop you back into stage one again. But from here on out, um, training will follow the same looping requirements as expert, where subsequent loops will force you to play through all eight stages of expert, but now on loop four rank, which is maximum difficulty. And the game loops infinitely from this point using the same expert looping rules. So to kind of demonstrate this, I thought I'll just show off the only the first stage of mm. train, which is training to one, just to show how nuts it is at maximum rank. It's good call. Yeah, it's just it's too long otherwise. Um, Something else, well, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but it seems like, at least to me, whenever you start off with like a new loop, um, enemy bolts are somewhat like kind of pacified, and then it's like the rank to build it up to like the next loop just builds up over the course of the stage. Yeah. <sighs> it looks like they got faster just after those first few enemies. Yeah. So, <laughs> interesting. Maybe it does. Maybe it probably onto something with that. Like it probably just has to build up, but it builds up really quickly to the new max value or something. Yeah, it could be. We need a rank bar. Everybody loves rank bars. <laughs> I mean, so I have talked to somebody here about this. Like, I'm too sure we just make like a fort of this. Damn, that's that's what I call yeah. a sniper. Uh, yeah. Sniper tank. Yeah, at this point they're just slowly like firing like immediately as they pop on screen. It's like, literally the same speed of a gun of a gun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the crazy part too is like this maximum difficulty rank isn't even as crazy as like right in one can get, but it's, it's still just like so ridiculously fast. It's funny. Because right at one, um, that game, like, I don't know if you ever seen, like, the infamous Loop 9, like, video, but that game, like, the bolts will get to, like, hit scan. Like, oh, yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. I think I have seen that. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. Like, I guess it's they just funny. figure, like, let's just have it uncapped because nobody will cut this far. I wonder how many Psycho devs played this, you know, or any of the writing devs. I love these fast bullets. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, yeah. there's like some clear design etymology. I feel like, like a lot metal. of the time they like have an idea of what the capability of the player is, but they just figure like, yeah, hey, we'll just let them have, you know, let them do what they're going to do. And we'll just yeah. have like these later loops or whatever. And people will probably manage it. Yeah, exactly. Like, how do you play yeah. test? Like, how do you play test that? I mean, all the time. Yeah, you, you can't. Have a like, there's super player on hand. It wasn't even a fame until like later on, but like, even just basic game development, honestly, like, not really a loop stuff. Like, there's been so many interviews I read where it's like, for example, like the Donkey like Kill Screen buggers, like, we had nobody skilled enough to get that far to see, like, if that was like an actual issue. <laughs> so. There you have it. Um, that pretty much ends what I had recorded up to this point. Um, so yeah, cool. that was a great run. 
I think the only other thing I want to mention at this point is just a brief blurb about the console port of this, which is right in DX again. It was released back in 90, 1997 for PlayStation 1. It was released by Saibu themselves. It was an in-house port that they made. And there's actually quite a bit of differences from what I remember. And a lot of these are covered in like Saucy Cobalt's guide, but some of the differences include like a difference in refresh rate. Arcade uses a 55 hertz refresh rate while PlayStation is closer to the NTSC J standard of 59.94 slash 60 hertz. Um, plasma and homing weapons are a bit weaker in arcade. Arcade version doesn't let you stockpile multiple fairies. Um, Arcade doesn't display alignment bonus in some levels, but the sound effect still plays. Um, Arcade has a few more graphical details here and there. The PlayStation default music sounds a bit different than the arcade music. Um, arcade boss time bonus is much lower for 0 to 10 second and 10 to 20 second boss kills. This one is actually pretty big. Um, you can easily get like an easy 100k, like if you just kill bosses like as fast as you do an arcade version so that's one of the main factors of why usually like playstation one scores are separated from arcade um okay um arcade fighting spirit gets a major boost if start is held down um in arcade training items 25 or 30 in the item sequence are bombs um if judgment mode is on with playstation's Training Course 10 7 Golden Radar has mysterious unlock conditions. If Judgment Mode is off, it has the same prerequisite as it does in the arcade version, which is destroying the 6 Golden Radar. The arcade does not give an end of course bonus in Training 1 6 or later in Training, while PlayStation 1 port does. Um, arcade Expert lacks Golden Radars and no course bonus. These are present in PlayStation Expert if Judgment is on. Um, to explain a little bit of what Judgment is, um, it's actually one of the unlockables in the port. If you beat any course on Arcade 4 difficulty, um, Judgment is on by default, even before you beat this Arcade 4 like course requirement. When it's turned off, the following changes will be in effect. The 7th Golden Radar M10 always appears after the 6th is destroyed. Um, Gold radars are omitted in expert and, and level six for eight of training, and then of course bonus is omitted in expert. So as a result of this alone, when I was comparing other runs, um, what it means basically is in expert course, all the arcade runs I've shown you, you just you know pick up medals, kill enemies, destroy the boss. In the PlayStation One port, there are these ra radars that are kind of there's one per stage in expert course in that mode with judgment on um this gives another uh, 200k points per stage and in addition to this um with the whole end of course bonus that means playstation players have a significant scoring advantage compared to arcade just with the amount of extra points you can get um there's also i think a couple of different enemy placements um some enemy spots in, are fixed in the port for training course. Arcade's expert level 5 is two brown tanks that will attack from the bottom. Arcade level 6 gliders don't fire as soon as they enter the screen, but do in the PlayStation version. The 6 boss has a um, white bullet spread, which has a longer reload time in Arcade versus PlayStation. Um, arcade level 7 is more meteors before the boss. Arcade has more side spawning tanks that take an unpredictable amount of time to fire their first shot. Um, enemies normally can't fire if they spawn if the boss is exploded, but the tanks and helis at the end of Arcade Expert Level 1 are the sole exceptions. And in addition to this, um, there are some other unlockables that are present in this PlayStation 1 port. Um, there's a replay mode where after you play credit, you can view a replay or save it to your PlayStation 1 memory, memory card um there is a by default the game comes with a arcade soundtrack which is slightly different than mentioned before or has this new release music which is all cd um da audio 
if you play credit with this new release music, you actually unlock another um, soundtrack, which is a basically a ranged version from Viper Phase 1. Oh, that's um, cool. There's also the Master of Item, where if you beat um, Training 1-0, you can unlock this 1-0 run that gets every enemy, destroys every golden radar, radar scores 6.5 million points and advances to training 1-1. One, one. There's a DX encyclopedia where if you beat expert course, um, you unlock this encyclopedia, which has text descriptions and 3D models for the Raiden Mark II and every single boss, and I think some enemies in the game. There's a boss rush mode where if you beat every course, you unlock a boss rush where you fight every boss in the game on a difficulty setting. It's a bit easier than arcade. Um, items and lives will be hidden in some trees. You can also beat any course on arcade mode to um, unlock arcade 2, arcade 3, and arcade 4 difficulties, which are equivalent to their respective loop 2 rank difficulties, etc. Um, you can also adjust game speed, which if you play will be unlocked if you play credit with judgment off it's normally on normal by default arcade tries to simulate the slightly slower speed the arcade version um there's also a ship speed adjustment setting where if you beat expert of judgment off um you it's it's on normal by default and if you set it to fast it will adjust the speed to be right in fighters judge spear fast and very fast um the ship speed this says is imbued with the spirit of Uotaru, which is the hidden cat character in Dangun Feet Run. So I can only imagine how con controllable or it is. So. Oh shit. Yeah. And then last but not least, um, it also does come with a demo of Battle Balls, which is a sort of um, puzzle stacking game that Saibu released on their SPI system that lets you play like the first level or two. And then basically it just gives you like a little teaser and ends it. So. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff. Yeah, and, it's uh, pretty yeah. substantial, yeah. I mean, it just goes to show, I mean, <clears throat> they're actually doing a legitimate port here and not just emulation, which would have circumvented a lot of the different gameplay changes and everything. But, Correct. you know, you'd have input lag. And besides, like, the PlayStation 1 probably couldn't even emulate it anyways. Oh, so, you mean the Battle Balls, or...? I mean, uh, like, Raiden DX. I mean... I guess, yeah. I think for them it was just, like, they already made the Raiden project, which was... Well, it's kind of like their own, like, port of Raiden 1 and Raiden 2 for PlayStation 1. And probably didn't have yeah. decently sales wise to warrant like let's make up more for this. Um, one last thing I probably should clarify too is um, there are two separate difficulty modes in the PlayStation version, which are normal mode and arcade. And basically, normal mode is going to be easier than playing it on like you know the arcade version of Right in DX, whereas the PlayStation Arcade mode is slightly harder than um, playing it on the arcade version. Yeah. But, yeah, that's really all about it, because honestly, um, adding another video to this would be at least a good 40 minutes, and <laughs> I feel like the amount of changes kind of sums up like what's different about this port versus you know, Cade. Um, all I know is that a couple people like have played the PlayStation 4, which is like Saucy, Icarus did some credits like a very, very long time ago now um, on normal. And then Erpo played this back in like 2013. So. Right, yeah, I, I was just remembering that uh, Right in DX is not part of the Ryan Project release, but it's its own thing. Right. That, that's correct. It's yeah. its own separate port. Yeah. Which only got a Japan only release. Okay. Yeah. Well, then we have uh, 
Well, just Raiden, I think, is on the Arcade Arcades nowadays. Correct. So hopefully, that's probably get two in DX eventually. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for, or like M2 maybe to check it yeah. out, because I think this is a game that, I mean, as good as accurate releases are, I feel like this is a game where not only do you need like maybe some rank stuff to show like what the heck is going on in the background sometimes, but also just having additional safe state support, I think is, you know, very beneficial to a game that's really mem memorization heavy as this. Well, if I got the M2 treatment too, I'm sure they'd allow you to like set all the different training parameters of, uh, you know, training loop three and whatever and all that. And yeah, that really is nice because that makes it transparent. Like that uh, all, all that actually exists without having to watch this episode, for example. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. Like, I think that would just clarify a lot of stuff for players because I feel like, you know, people kind of get scared off of 2 and DX because it's just like, oh man, there's so much to like keep track of. Yeah. It's pretty hardcore. I mean, damn. Yeah, it is. <laughs> they went pretty crazy. Yeah, come yeah. on, M2. Get in on this. Please. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I mean, I think this is honestly a great game that people should check out and having a core would really kind of make it more accessible to those who either don't have a means to play it in like main or have like the PS1 port. Could very well be a thing. I mean, uh, I don't know where I was going to go with that, but it could very well be a thing. <laughs> yeah. That's maybe next year. <laughs> oh, I was yeah. going to say, uh, M2's got DOJ right now. Uh, That's announced. right. So we're just going to wait for that, and then maybe later we'll see what else they're going to cook up. Oh, they're kind of the Razies um, arcade um, chronology or whatever it is in March. Oh, what's that so going to be? So that's going to cover the three games in the Taito Ray series, which is Ray Force, oh, Ray Storm, sweet. and Ray Crisis. And I'm honestly pretty interested in picking it up when it comes out because Ray Storm is another game I want to clear at some point and kind of a balls hard game to figure out just on your own without. You know. Well, what I was going to say earlier is, uh, you know, everybody knows right in still so it's like it could be profitable to you know really re-release Raiden dx again since everybody knows yeah it's like, got I... right, it's like at the Raiden name and plus like we were in this era now where a lot of these cave games and stuff are getting released and hopefully people are realizing they do have scoring systems and stuff and uh Raiden dx would be another one to dig into yeah exactly i mean i've heard a lot of it before like the people who can get into scoring at this game like really enjoy it so seems like it's got a great I flow think, to it yeah it, it does like i think overall like all the courses here have much much better pacing than something like two where um i don't know what they were smoking when they came up <laughs> with with some of these difficulty spikes there but it, it can get pretty egregious with how some bosses are just way and stages way harder than others yeah, I knew Raiden 2 was hard, but I never really played it enough to know how hard it actually is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for most people, I just, most people I talk to besides like Uncle, who cleared it literally like last week in like no time at all, um, a lot of people are just putting in like a lot of hours to just, you know, learning basic stuff like how to get past stage five. So, it's yeah, I can appreciate states. Yeah, but I guess getting back to what I was saying before, I, I can really appreciate a lot of the changes they made for DX especially, and I kind of feel like more people need to check it out. Yeah. That is nice. Like, if you're someone who really likes games that are all about aggressive play, point blinking, and metal pickups, this is definitely one you should check out. And it's got the jams, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's so good. <laughs> All right, well, good stuff. I think we can uh, wrap it up at this point. Thanks, everyone, for coming by for another episode. And uh, we have gotten uh, some 
submissions from you guys for more episodes. Uh, we actually re released a link to a submission form. Um, I'll be putting it. Uh, I put it in the last the YouTube description of the last uh, episode, but I'll be doing that from now on. So if you do want to submit your own uh, episode as a commentator, or even if you just have an idea for one, I think you can still use the submission form. Um, but yeah, feel free to use that. It'll be a link in the description. And we already got like four or five stuff from people, so we will be trying to contact you soon. So we can uh, keep the show rolling nicely along in the uh, new year here. Thanks for watching, everybody. And thanks to Gigi Maximo. Good stuff. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, GG's. It was, yeah, it was good we did this, honestly. Been waiting for this for a long time. <laughs> DX. <laughs> That's all I got. Okay, yeah, th <laughs> thanks everyone. We'll, we'll catch you around. Till next time. Till next time. See you next game. <laughs>